As we get ready to worship, let me read to you Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you that in you, we can rejoice. As we fix our eyes on you, there's so much reason to rejoice. And so, Father, may hope rise as we just focus on you. And as we worship, may you be our focus. And may that strengthen us in our times of trials and tribulations. And Lord, thank you that we will always depend on you. We, the prayer, the worship won't stop after this. But we will be constant in prayer. That this will jumpstart a vibrant, dynamic prayer life. That we could continuously have hope in you. So Lord, thank you. We honor you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
Thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can sing to you today as a church, as your people, remembering your goodness in our lives and what you've done for us on the cross, your finished work. Father, I pray that no matter how many times we hear this gospel preached to us, no matter how many times we encounter it, we will never grow too familiar with it. We will never Take it for granted, God, and we would always, always remember the sacrifice you made, the cost to you, O oh God, and what that means for us as your children now. Church, today I'd just like to read a verse I'm sure you're all familiar with, but every time I come across it, it just grips my heart. It says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, but God demonstrates His love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If we could just grasp the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross and what God had to go through just to provide that way out for us, sacrificing His only Son while we were still His enemies, while we were still sinners. That's why this salvation we enjoy is not something that we have worked on on our own. It's something, it's not something we can take credit for. It's what God has graciously provided for us. And when we think about that, may we get on our knees in worship and thanksgiving unto Him for everything that we now enjoy a life filled with hope here on earth and eternal life with him eventually is not by our own doing but only by his grace and that is why we can sing to him that is why we can worship him with our lips that is why we can worship him with our lives so may we always remember may we not be forgetful and may we be thankful may that bring us down to our knees and live our lives filled with faith and hope in the only one who can rescue us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your rescue. We thank you that you have done everything to reconcile us back to you. And God, I pray that we may never be too familiar with the gospel. We would always grasp that we need a savior, the greatness of our sin against you. But at the same time, may we always embrace the greatness of your provision in Jesus Christ. And may that cause us to worship you. May that cause us to serve you and to serve others around us. We thank you, Lord, that this knowledge of the gospel puts everything into perspective. And no matter what we face, we can always have hope because Jesus Christ has won it all for us. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As we continue to worship the Lord this time, we're going to worship Him through our giving. Let us read from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verses 28 and 29. At the end of every third year, bring the entire tithe of that year's harvest and store it in the nearest town. Give it to the Levites who will receive no allotment of land among you, as well as to the foreigners living among you, the orphans and the widows in your towns, so they can eat and be satisfied. 
then the Lord your God will bless you in all your work. As we give our tithes and offering, we just are assured that God will bless us. Now, tithes and offering that you give, it's actually being used to the advancement of the kingdom of God. It is used to help the poor. It is used in things that honor the Lord. And our assurance is that the Lord will bless us as we give our tithes and offering. Why don't we pray right now? Lord, we just want to say thank you. We are grateful that the reason why we can even give our tithes and offering to you, Lord, because in the first place, you have blessed us with so much. So today, Lord God, as we bring back what belongs to you, Lord, we pray, Lord God, that uh, first of all, we can worship you through this, but at the same time, Lord God, it will help other people know you as well. We thank you, Lord God, that we can honor you in this manner. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, Martisados. Again, uh, welcome to the Tuesday service, and thank you for welcoming me in this Tuesday service. Let's read from Philippians 3, starting from verse 4. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead, straining toward the goal, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these words of Paul inspired by the Holy Spirit. May it give light to our life now, our situation now. May it encourage, may it give us strength, may it instruct us, may it mold us into your image. And Lord, may we hear it with our hearts as well as with our minds that we may follow you, seek after you, and obey you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, thank you for inviting me, Martisados. Uh, we're continuing our series on Joyful, and today we're going to talk about Philippians 3, this particular part of Philippians 3. Now, we started reading from verse 4, but prior to verse 4, 
the text was saying, the context was saying that uh, Paul was really dissed with uh, what he called the dogs. Now, these dogs, uh, apparently, whenever Paul would minister, there are people who follow him, follow his ministry, and instead of Akyat Bahai, Akyat Church, they go there and start teaching the people that just been converted that, hey, uh, having faith is just the beginning, being, being baptized is just the beginning. After that, you still have to do these things, our tradition. You have to still do the Jewish things, follow the Jewish ceremonies, and so on and so forth. So in other words, they were adding to the gospel of faith, adding works or the law into the gospel of faith. And Paul would call these people, they, they were called the Judaizers, and Paul would call these people dogs, which is ironic because that's the term that the Jews used uh, against pagans. If you weren't a Jew, you're considered a dog. But in Paul's theology, they were the dogs if they were adding anything at all to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's the context, and this is what Paul was saying. He was saying, okay, if you, you're, priding, if you're priding yourself on the traditions of the law being a Jew, if, if you think you've earned so much credits for yourself, then wala kay sa akin. If you think you're the goat, you're not the goat. I'm the goat here. So he cites several things that is, uh, that, you know, uh, he's, he cites his resume. Ito uh, yung mga accomplishments ko. Well, accomplishment and some by birth. Number one, since birth, may, may kilala ba kayo yung uh, mga Christian since birth? Siya, he was already a Jew since birth. Circumcised on the third day. That's what it means. That he comes from a godly family. From the tribe of Is, from Israel. A, Jew, a Hebrew of Hebrews. Siya yung original na HOH. Hebrew of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. Now, Pharisee is not necessarily a bad word. When you're a Pharisee, it means you've really, you've really embraced the law. You live the life inside out. You've memorized scriptures. You're a person of the Torah. Not only do you read it, you practice it in every facet of your life. You're a good person. You're generous to the poor. You obey the Ten Commandments. You do no wrong. You just do good. So he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. In other words, sobrang level niya. So if you come to him with his, your championship ring, I have this NBA championship ring, Paul will say this. Do you see this? Championship one, championship two, championship three. Hanggang dito. You're not the goat, I'm the goat. And it doesn't end here. Papakita niya pa yung mga daliri ng paa niya. Puno rin ng championship Championship, championship rings. Well, doesn't end there. As to zeal and passion, a persecutor of the church. In other words, he was, he was obeying the Jewish law so much that it doesn't matter what it cost him. It doesn't matter sino maapakan, but he, maapakan, he will do it. Now, some people say that it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. But Paul is saying here, not only was he right, uh, as to righteousness under the law, he, he believed what is right, but he was also sincere. He was, in other words, a thoroughbred. Alam niyo being thoroughbred? Hindi siya askal. Walang halo. He was the purest of the pure by bloodline, by action. He belonged to an exclusive tribe. As to righteousness, ito yung sinabi niya, without fault, blameless. So if you want to know who the goat is, the goat is Paul. But he would say some things. All these things, all these accomplishments. Now, by the way, let me just say, if you notice the list, read, read through the list, they're not bad. They're not sinful at all. They're actually good. But... And this is a big but. If that becomes your confidence, then it's just rubbish. It's nothing. In fact, Paul would say that all of those things, it wasn't just a metaphor na, I compared to knowing Christ, baliwala to. No, si sabi niya, nagiging balakid to 
to knowing Christ. That's why I consider all of these things. My, my race, my family. He came from a very prestigious family. I remember when I, uh, when I was a bit younger, sometimes may kausap kong older people, and they would ask me, uh, kainin ang anak ka? Then you mentioned the family name. Taga saan yun? They're trying to establish, and yung kung makausap sa akin kasi, they had a family name that's very familiar. Alam niya yung mga prestigious family names. So they were trying to establish if I came from the same lineage. I'm a de la calzada, of course. So he was able to establish yung mga Zobel, mga Ayala, lahat yan, calzada. So we're the generic of all the uh, wealthy roads. Lahat niyan mga calzada yan. So na-establish ko rin yung importance of our family. But for Paul, that was nothing. In fact, he would say, all of these things are rubbish. Now, that's the English translation. That's the English translation, but the Greek is, it's much more, it's much more crass. It's much more graphic. The word rubbish is what you would normally associate with this one. I consider the bloodline, the diplomas, the masteral, the, the good name, the, the heritage, I, call, I consider them all rubbish. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng word. It's, uh, the Greek word means excrement. All of that is excrement because what's more important is knowing Christ. You see, when you add anything to Christ, May, may saying as, uh, uh, I think it was Chavijan who said once that Jesus plus anything is actually nothing. When you add to grace, you get nothing. But Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Jesus is supreme above and every other value, every other treasure. It cannot compare to anything in this world. And that's what Paul was saying. Uh, I don't compared to the surpassing worth of Christ, everything else is rubbish. I'm willing to walk away from that. I'm willing to throw everything away for the sake of knowing Christ. And he was talking about something else as well. He was talking about the righteousness, having a righteousness from the law, or having the righteousness that comes from the faith. Allow me to read it. And being found in him, that's verse 9, and being found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. You know, the righteousness that God accepts is dependent solely on faith, and it's only the righteousness provided by Christ. There's an old uh, presentation by the evangelistic explosion, and uh, they would, like, for example, show a book this thick, if you go to God in time of judgment and you show this thick a ledger of all the good things that you've ever done, that would never be acceptable to God because it's not a perfect righteousness. Uh, all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans also tells us that our righteous deeds are as filthy rags in the eyes of God. When you go before Him and you come before Him with your righteousness, that is unacceptable before God according to Scripture. When you come to God in the day of judgment, you must come before Him with the righteousness that was provided or imputed on you by Jesus Christ. That's the only righteousness that, ac that is accepted. And that righteousness represents the life of Jesus, His death, his obedience to the Father and His resurrection. That's the only righteousness affect, uh, accepted by God. The old reformers, particularly Martin Luther, he would call that righteousness of God that's acceptable to God because it was provided by God through Christ. He called that the righteousness that, that is extra nos. That's Latin for alien righteousness. You know what an alien is? What comes to our mind is you spaceships, you know, uh, alien beings, meaning it's not from this earth 
what Martin Luther was saying, it's not from our own body, it's not from our own action, it's alien from us, it's outside of our own body, an alien righteousness that's given to us, imputed, given to us, not because of our own action. And that is the righteousness that saves, a righteousness that doesn't come from our own action. He would also call this, this uh, he, he used a Latin term, simuli justus et precator. Don't be uh, impressed by that. It's just Latin for, you're simultaneously righteous and a sinner. In other words, in, by your action, you're still growing up in faith. Uh, you're still a sinner. You still sin. But at the same time, you're saved. You're saved. You're perfect. You are righteous before God. Why? Because Judd, God looks at you as if he's looking at the righteousness of Christ. And God looks at your si- when God looks at Christ at the cross, he saw your sin nailed on the cross. So, baliwala yung credentials mo, whether before you became a Christian, after you became, baliwala, that's not counted. The only thing that counts is that alien righteousness that Jesus has provided for us. So, this is what Paul was saying. Regardless of what, how spiritual that sounds, if you're trying to accomplish that, you're trying to add to what Jesus did, you are devaluing what Jesus did. Because what you're saying is, kulang pa ginawa ni Christ. Our worship to Christ is to surrender to the finished work of Christ. When we add nothing, we're saying, wow, napakaganda ng ginawa mo, Panginoon, sa Cruz ng Calvario. What a perfect work that I can't even add an iota or tittle into that work. It's so perfect. Not a dash or tittle can be added. It's so perfect. So let me tell you, if this list of accomplishments, accomplishment, your bio data doesn't get you anywhere, but this power of attorney, this resume, gives you everything, gives you, adopts you as a son of God, gives you righteousness, forgiveness, purpose, joy in life, what would you rather study? This resume? Your, uh, ano ba tawag yung mga list of grades natin nung, nung college? Your, uh, your GPA or God's GPA? Which will you study? If this is an inheritance from God, what will you study? You will study your inheritance from God. And our inheritance from God is found in Christ and it's in Christ alone. And that's why Paul would say, whatever is to my benefit, whatever is to my credit, that's what he would say, rubbish. That's nothing. A crass word compared to knowing Christ. Now, if you're here today and you've put your faith in things that you have done, in things that you plan to do, you think that if I do this, God would love me, God would accept me. If you are in Christ, God loves you. God accepts you. Your righteousness is in Christ alone, hidden in Him. This is what Paul would say, that I would know him. You know, when you know this, you would seek to know him. And this is what he's saying, the power in the power of his resurrection. You want to know the resurrection power living inside of you. The resurrection, of, the resurrection power in Christ living inside of you. The power to resist sin. The power to obey God. The power to do, be generous. The power to be helpful, the power of purpose, the power of joy that comes from the resurrection of Christ. You want, Paul wanted to know that, but not only that, he wanted to participate in his suffering. If Jesus suffered, he wanted to know, he wanted to be part of that suffering. Now, there, uh, uh, we're in a pandemic right now. And two, during 250 AD, there was a group, a Christian group that was formed. They were called the Gamblers. In, in, in Italian, I forgot the name of their name. In, in, I think it's called Parabolani. They were called the Gamblers. And their mission was they were going to go to places where nobody, that people didn't want to go, like prisons, uh, where there were sick people, uh, orphanages. They were just going to go there. They were going to gamble. Uh, that was their, 
their gamble. And a plague hit them. Sounds familiar? A plague hit them in Car Carthage, and it was so bad. It was so bad that uh, family members, uh, they, they didn't quarantine. They threw away family members who were sick. They wouldn't help them. They left the city. They would stay away even from their loved ones so that they could survive. Family, that was the account of the historians. And what the bishop there, Cyprian, with the gamblers, they went out in the city, took care of those who were sick, those who were dying, buried those who were dying, because they didn't even bury the dead because they were afraid to get the plague. Obviously, some of them got sick, some of them died. They knew the suffering of Christ. Now, I'm not saying that we do that, that we go out and, and not wear our mask and take care of people. But can you see the love that they were willing to participate in the suffering of others? You know why they did that? Because they wanted to see a facet of Christ that they couldn't see in prosperity and in comfort. There's a facet of Christ that you cannot ever see if you're in, just in comfort or in luxury. There's a facet of the gospel of love that you understand when you walk among the poor, those who are suffering. And that's what Paul is teaching us. So Paul was saying though, now I haven't arrived yet. You see, I had all these things, I have, they're all garbage, but this is what I'm striving for, but I haven't accomplished that yet. He said that, uh, not that I've achieved that goal yet, but forgetting what is behind and straining forward, he pressed on. Forgetting what's behind, your former glories, your former, your former sufferings, those memories, forgetting what is behind and straining forward. And moving on, pressing on. It gives you the idea of just pressing on, trudging along. One foot on, on top of the other, just moving along. You know, that is the legacy of our faith. We're not in a legacy of faith, of comfort, of just... That's not the inheritance that you have, of just having what, what's in it for me. What's, uh, you know, I just want the good times. No, that, the, the legacy of faith that we have is the legacy of what Paul is leaving us. That's the leg of, legacy of faith of our church. That we go, we'd rather go, uh, be uncomfortable, go in, be in the campuses, go into the mission field, go in our, in our social responsibility and preaching the gospel everywhere we go. We press on, not that we have achieved and we, we're never going to be glory on what we've ac accomplished. No, never. Our glory is in Christ and Christ alone. Let me leave you with this point. Knowing Christ is a lifetime pursuit. That is the only worthwhile pursuit in life. Now, I know I'm not there yet. A lot of the, us are not there yet. But I can't force you to say, oh, no, Christ, get to be intimate with him, know him. But I can tell you to look at Christ, to look at the message of the cross, and let the Spirit mold you and shape you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Spirit, for the resurrection of Christ, for your Word that shapes us, that shapes our affection, that we may not glory in the glories of, of this world on our own efforts, but you have given us a righteousness apart from ourselves. You have given us a purpose beyond ourselves. And Lord, you have given us the spirit that looks forward, that presses on towards the goal. Thank you, Lord, that you are that goal. Nothing compares with you. And even maybe there are aspects in our life that we took glory on. May we count it as rubbish. And may we look to you as our sole treasure in this life our sole purpose, and our sole goal, to please you, to know you. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we go, let's just be in an attitude of expectation and faith as we receive 
the blessings of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Simula at katapusan